Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Saturday out there. Hope we're all having a really good weekend and we're really starting to get close to Thanksgiving week here. And with that, uh, getting closer to this likely storm that is going to cross the country really starting now going into that Thanksgiving week. And that could be followed up by another storm system right after going into the days after Thanksgiving. So a very busy week ahead and I definitely want you to stay up to date. And a great way to do that, of course, is by hitting that subscribe button and uh, also make sure to hit that bell to stay up to date with the latest notifications notifications. Uh, so every time I upload a video it should uh, kind of ding your phone there so you get that. And also of course like the video and comment let me know what you're seeing out there. Again a lot of us kind of saw some rain over the past day or so but uh, really starting to clear out for a lot of folks. So let me know if you're starting to see the sunshine out there and uh, kind of you know what kind of plans you have for your Thanksgiving as well. Always love to read those comments. Alrighty with that said let's go ahead and jump right into that forecast. So Again, taking a look at satellite imagery here, uh, overall clear for a lot of folks. Now, uh, we are kind of dealing with a little bit of a close call with this very impressive low pressure kind of spinning away off the northeast coast right now. That, again, very strong storm luckily is going to miss the United States and to uh, kind of continue to work up towards Nova Scotia and Newfoundland going through the next couple of days. But we are definitely seeing some breezy and cloudy conditions and even a little bit of rain left over this morning through sections of coastal New England as that storm gets very close to the coast and broke rushes on by. But outside of there, you'll notice a lot of blue skies for much of the country uh, today, and that should continue as high pressure really settles into the eastern half of the United States, uh, bringing in those nice blue clear skies and also a bit uh, drier and a tad cooler as well today probably uh, than what you saw yesterday for most folks. Uh, now, outside of that, we are dealing with kind of a storm system moving into California. This is part of the energy that is going to lead to our storm system later uh, going into tomorrow and into the following days. We're going to get this kind of southern piece of energy and another northern piece of energy to work together in tandem here and just have a lot of uh, kind of ingredients to form a big time storm going into the start of our Thanksgiving week. All right, taking a look at radar again, clear for most of us, a little bit of rain left over in the northeast again as that storm system is still kind of moving on by the coast combined with that cold front still working on through as well. But outside of there, again, the only rain we're really seeing is out into California, some pretty impressive rain as well as down into the desert southwest uh, through sections of Arizona and New Mexico seeing some rain uh, this afternoon as well. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start talking about that storm next week, as again, I'm sure that's why most of you are here. So we're going to start with our 500 millibar map that we normally start with, and we've been starting with for the past couple of videos. So again, this is kind of that troughing we're seeing right now that's leading to some cooler air through the East Coast this afternoon. That is kind of working on through and having that cold front attached to it. That, though, is going to kind of clear the country and cross through by the time we're getting into tomorrow afternoon. And that's when our next big piece of energy or our next trough off here in blue begins to work into the central plains and eventually kind of combines with some northern energy here to really uh, get going and we have a very impressive front that's going to cross the country during the middle part of next week all accompanied by some very strong low pressure uh, that is going to bring plenty of rain some severe weather and even some snow for some folks uh, before eventually that kind of swings on through the country and we're left over with some very cold air kind of trying to work on in the northeast and great lakes and potentially the southeast as well i'll discuss some of those differences in the models here in a second but uh, this likely leading to some impressive uh, lake effect snow for somebody who again we still kind of have to get a little bit closer to iron those details out but somebody likely to get some impressive lake effect snow out of that as that big kind of blob of cold air hangs on uh, going into our Thanksgiving day and likely even the weekend following. Alrighty, so that's kind of the overall setup we're dealing with here. Let's go ahead and start by talking about some of the severe weather chances with this storm system. So again, this whole storm really starting tomorrow, and with that, we do have the chance of some severe weather, albeit uh, nothing off the charts here, but definitely enough to kind of take a look at here, uh, right really into the heart of Oklahoma, having the best chance at some strong storms tomorrow afternoon. Uh, one thing we will be lacking is instability tomorrow. We will have some wind energy out there, but unfortunately, or I guess I should say fortunately, um, we're going to have a a lot of cloud cover and a lot of rain so these storms that do form are going to be relatively limited in what they can do tomorrow but uh, nonetheless still have to keep an eye on those storms uh, through tomorrow afternoon. I think the bigger chance though for severe weather likely comes Monday afternoon as we already have a big slight risk up for much of uh, kind of eastern or excuse me yeah no eastern it is <laughs> uh, eastern Texas there all of Louisiana southern Arkansas and much of Mississippi as well uh, in a big shot of some strong storms 
for our Monday afternoon. And going into Tuesday, uh, we could also see potentially a limited risk of some strong storms further east of there, but I think Tuesday also looks relatively uh, limited in that potential due to lack of instability, even if we will have plenty of wind energy out there. Alrighty, so with all that said, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at some models here. I'll show you the NAM first. We are getting kind of in that mesoscale range, if you will, and what that means is uh, we're likely going to see uh, or have some of our models able to uh, show us some of that short range guidance. So as I move this ahead, again, a really nice day today for our Saturday. You'll notice uh, pretty nice blue clear skies for most folks out there. Uh, it's going into tomorrow that things change. So uh, tonight's still relatively nice, maybe even some snow showers for you folks in the higher elevations of the Northeast as again, that trough swings on through and brings in some of that moisture off the lakes uh, going into this evening and into tomorrow afternoon as well. But the bigger story tomorrow afternoon is definitely going to be this big time storm system that begins to crank up here out towards Oklahoma. So uh, going into you know tomorrow afternoon, likely a pretty big shield of rain here expanding from Texas up into Nebraska, but the places that have the best chance of seeing severe weather out of that rain shield here into central Oklahoma as we looked at on our previous map. All right, so moving this ahead into kind of overnight Sunday and into the early morning hours of Monday, you'll notice the storm system continuing to get its act together out here, uh, still raining for much of the central plains, waking up on our Monday morning, but it's Monday afternoon that this storm finally begins to kind of uh, begin to move eastbound uh, into sections of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and that's when our severe weather threat on Monday will begin to occur out here towards uh, those areas that we looked at earlier from anywhere from eastern Texas all the way into Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas having the chance at some strong to severe storms uh, for our Monday afternoon. So uh, definitely make sure you have a way to get those warnings on Monday afternoon. Uh, just, you know, have a way to look at radar and get any kind of alert that should come across uh, to warn you about impeding weather and uh, some severe weather moving on through. Alrighty, so that's as far out as our NAM model goes, so we're going to have to switch on over to our global models now and kind of take a look to see at what they're showing here uh, for this storm system going into next week. So uh, again, we'll start with the GFS and then we'll move to the Euro, and we are still seeing some uh, very interesting differences between the two models, I guess is the best way to word it, and I'll kind of talk about that here as we move ahead. So uh, both models agree we get that low pressure to kind of develop over Oklahoma going into tomorrow and Monday before again Monday afternoon that severe threat moves off towards the east. It's after that though that we kind of see uh, some differences in our models here. So now the GFS here uh, continues to strengthen this low pressure system, move it up towards the Ohio River Valley and uh, bringing with it a pretty big line of some showers and even some thunderstorms here through much of the southeast, the mid-Atlantic and even the Ohio River Valley and into the Great Lakes. And that would be for Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon uh, is kind of what you're seeing on your map here. Now, going into Tuesday afternoon and evening, that's when this low pressure likely kind of runs into some cold air up into the northeast, and that could bring some snow into sections of the interior northeast uh, from upstate New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, potentially even western Massachusetts, seeing some snow at the beginning here before likely changing over to rain for most folks outside of the higher elevations there. Now, um, another thing I do want to kind of mention here on this map that you might notice is obviously the low pressures here and we have all of this rain uh, in front of it, but something the GFS is kind of latching onto is this idea of some further troughing behind the main low pressure and some cold air aloft. Uh, that could kind of potentially move in behind that first cold front. So uh, should this happen, we could potentially get a secondary low pressure to form going into Wednesday morning and afternoon into the southeast as depicted here by this latest GFS model. And should this happen, that rain will persist longer. We'll get more rain than maybe we were originally thinking. And potentially, if enough of this cold air aloft can kind of hang around, uh, we could see a quick change over to some wet, heavy snow uh, for somebody here into the southeast. If that were to happen, though, uh, likely the highest chance of that being in the higher elevations of Tennessee and North Carolina. So it could get some token uh, kind of snowflakes there for our day before Thanksgiving. But uh, the good news is the GFS still does clear us out by the time we hit Thanksgiving uh, morning and afternoon. So even if we do see a little bit longer unsettled weather for some folks, it still clears out likely by the time we hit Thanksgiving Day. And we have a beautiful kind of stretch from Thursday of next week through Friday before likely another cold front and storm system begin to set its eyes on the country going into the weekend after Thanksgiving. 
All right, so that's our GFS model. Let's take a look at our European model now and see kind of what differences we have. Again, they both agree on storm development here uh, and some severe weather during the day of Sunday and Monday. And they also agree that this low pressure once again tracks up the Ohio River Valley, bringing rain for Tuesday afternoon into much of the southeast, mid-Atlantic, uh, Great Lakes region, and Ohio River Valley. Uh, and they also agree here that we likely get some snow into the interior northeast for our Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Again, places like Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York into Maine, likely the best places to kind of see some of that snow before this clears on through uh, going into our Wednesday afternoon. So Wednesday afternoon looks very different between the two models. Uh, GFS still has a lot of rain hanging around the southeast and mid-Atlantic. European is really clearing us out and bringing in a big block of cold air uh, into the Great Lakes region and into the northeast. So again, some pretty big differences there. Uh, I will say the European model does kind of develop that secondary low, but it's really um, much further delayed. And this is going to be going into our Thanksgiving night and Friday compared to the GFS, which is more of a Wednesday solution. So again, very different uh, depictions on that potential secondary low pressure. But the good news is the models do at least agree right now uh, that we are going to get one big time storm to cross the country uh, going right before Thanksgiving. So still feeling very confident on that. What happens afterwards, though, a lot of question marks still to kind of be answered there. Alrighty, taking a look at our rainfall map for the next five days, and this is beautiful to see because, again, we're in such a tough drought here through much of the southeast and mid-Atlantic, but luckily, a likely one to three inches of rain on the horizon here through much of kind of uh, this, you know, middle part of the east coast here from Louisiana all the way up through the Appalachian chain and into the northeast, and again, a lot of places in here really could use this rain, so some very good news here, and again, if we potentially get a secondary low to form here in the southeast, we could be pushing uh, maybe three to five inches of rain instead of one to three and uh, we'll definitely hope for that to happen because uh, again we really could use that rain through much of this part of the country all right so that's the rain and severe weather let's kind of talk about some of the snow now is again i'm sure a lot of you are probably interested in that snow chance for our thanksgiving week uh, so again going into kind of um after the storm system moves on through and that cold air moves on in going into Wednesday and Thursday through the Great Lakes region, uh, that's whenever I think we have the best chance of some lake effect snow. Now, uh, some models are more you know excited about that threat of lake effect snow compared to others, but I think the best chance kind of here in this part of the country to see some of that lake effect is going to be up here into the UP of Michigan, uh, likely the north uh, western coast there of Michigan itself and here just kind of on the western shores in general. But really the further north you are into Michigan here, the higher chance of seeing some of that lake effect snow. All right, as for the northeast, again, kind of a one-two punch here. One, we're going to get snow on the front end of this storm system, uh, at least in those higher elevations up into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and upstate New York, but also the potential for some lake effect snow on the back end. So we could potentially see one to three inches of snow accumulating, maybe even three to five in those higher peaks uh, here into the northeast going uh, into uh, really starting Tuesday night into Wednesday. We could see that snow start. And on the back end, seeing some of that lake effect snow potentially uh, in a place like Buffalo, Erie, PA. Uh, again, though, the lake effect is going to be a bit of a tougher forecast just because it really depends and what kind of orientation that cold air comes in as to who sees that lake effect snow and if really anybody does at all. But I still think at least somebody sees that lake effect snow and those places that you see the higher colors on this map have the best chance at it right now. Alrighty, so that's kind of the snow, the severe weather, the rain. What about the cold air? So again, right now, above average temperatures for a lot of folks, or at least average. And we continue that warm up going into tomorrow afternoon and Monday before here comes that cold front. And uh, with it, that blue air funnels in just in time for our Thanksgiving day. So uh, Thanksgiving afternoon here, I think likely uh, 5 to 10 degrees below average for much of the mid-Atlantic and southeast, and maybe 10 to 15 degrees below average up here kind of into the northern tier of the country from Minnesota all the way over towards Maine. So um, again, kind of having to watch where that cold air goes, but I think the best shot at seeing really cold air is going to be up into the Great Lakes region with still uh, average to slightly below average um, temperatures further south from there and potentially again another dumping of cold air later on into the month and even into the start of December so that's going to be something we really have to watch because our models have been uh, really hinting at this cold air outbreak uh, lasting a while and potentially uh, being reinforced by further outbreaks of cold air so climate prediction center here agrees a uh, high likelihood of below average temperatures for 
uh, our Thanksgiving Day and following that into Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, and that could last even longer into kind of the two-week period, going to uh, all the way to the start of December, seeing below average temperatures. Now, uh, one reason this is very interesting is you'll notice we're also going to have likely a very active southern jet stream here, bringing multiple storm systems through the Gulf of Mexico and up the East Coast. Uh, we could potentially overlap some of that precipitation with that cold air. We could get uh, very well some sort of winter storm here into the East Coast and maybe even uh, kind of far south into the East Coast, into the Ohio River Valley, mid-Atlantic potentially, uh, maybe even southern Great Plains seeing some winter weather towards the end of the month. Now, of course, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We still have to uh, get through this first storm system that we still have tons of question marks about, but definitely keep your eyes on the end of November and start of December. Very active pattern and favorable for some winter weather for at least somebody here in the East Coast uh, going into the start of December. Alrighty, so again, that's all I've got for you today on this Saturday. Hopefully the video was of use to you. And of course, if you have any questions that maybe I didn't answer, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll get around to answering those as soon as I can. But I do have a college football game to go to here in the afternoon. So uh, if it's not until this evening, I do apologize. But again, ask me nonetheless and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Uh, with that said though, again, have a great rest of your Saturday and have a good start to your Sunday tomorrow and I'll see you then.